Right. This is Howard Altman, Senior Managing Editor of Military Times. I'm here with Alexander Danilov, who is in Ukraine right now. How are you doing today? We are great. You know, we're fighting for our fatherland and we're winning. Can you give me a sense of, generally speaking, where you are and what you're seeing at the moment? Uh, I am in Ukraine, you know, in uh, Ukrainian fields and forests, and I see the defeat of Russians everywhere. What is the mood amongst the Ukrainian people right now? The moral is high, you know, higher than ever before. We have right now more than 93% of Ukrainian people who don't want to surrender. And actually, this is the, the highest unity of the nation in the Ukrainian history ever. What you observe? I observe, you know, that uh, Ukrainian people, men and women, who are stopping, you know, Russian tanks and uh, BTRs and BMPs, you know, shooting Russian helicopters, missiles, and, uh, you know, taking prisoners. Uh, yeah, and I can see that so-called Russian military who are trying to destroy our cities by the, you know, artillery, who are trying to surround our cities, who are trying to make our people starving. And actually, I'm not quite sure, you know, how Nazi behave themselves in this, uh, you know, fields and forests 80 years ago, but it seems to be very similar or even maybe worse. And what is it, what is your job? What is your role? My role right now is to coordinate, you know, joint efforts of uh, different Ukrainian agencies in the field of, uh, you know, detection of uh, Russian hybrid activities. And as you know, hybrid activities means all of the activities, including the military activities, because as we can see uh, right now, even military means uh, are used by Russians not for military purposes, because actually killing innocent civilians and actually to create that uh, humanitarian disaster, it's not a military operation. It's a, an operation of that brutal, you know, influence. Russia wants Ukrainians to surrender. They want, they want us, uh, you know, to see all of that uh, casualties, that, that, that dead, you know, kids. They want just to break our moral. This is the goal. So tell me, are you familiar with what President Zelensky said about foreign fighters starting to come to Ukraine to help? I heard that actually we had like more than three, uh, three dozen thousands, you know, applications uh, just, you know, two days ago. Uh, I don't know if anybody is in Ukraine right now, honestly, uh, but I know that a lot of guys, a lot of volunteers from Japan, for instance, which is actually a very neutral country since the Second World War, they're coming to join Ukrainian people in their fight for freedom and in their fight against this global evil, which is Russian Federation. What will those foreign fighters do? Uh, I don't know. Probably if they uh, wouldn't come, you know, in a week, nothing, because we're going to win this war, you know, very, very soon. Because right now, actually, we have that, uh, you know, superiority, because we understand that our armed forces, you know, our other security and defense agencies, people of Ukraine, they have that, you know, a reason to fight and we don't see the the same you know moral uh in uh russian military and that's why you know russians uh s s russians changed their strategy and they started that you know demolition of uh, our cities because uh it seems like it's uh, much much easier to kill ukrainians especially by missiles from belarus you know from russia without any direct contact with us. Now, do you, are, you, are you concerned that Russia, which has a very large military, is going to step up their activities and increase the uh, amount of troops and the amount of missiles and uh, aircraft attacks on Ukraine, Ukraine cities? I think that actually in the sense of human power, it's highly unlikely because 
they actually concentrated almost everything they could use against Ukraine. Uh, of course, they have some reserves if they would start using conscripts, but even professional soldiers, young guys like 20, 21 years old, they are completely useless. It's rather a liability than a real, you know, striking force. So I think that uh, actually it's completely clear that Putin conducted suicide by attack on Ukraine. And you know that that was my, uh, you know, forecast for uh, that alleged, you know, invasion into Ukraine. And actually, if he would decide to send conscripts to Ukraine, it would be just additional uh, reason for Russian people to overthrow this bloody dictator sooner. Uh, so no, I don't think that it's, it's, it is an option. And I don't think that this is a threat. I agree that actually what is a huge problem for us right now, it's Russian missiles. And despite Russia already used a uh, significant uh, part of uh, the existing missile capabilities on Ukraine, uh, uh, it's like hundreds of calibers in Iskander's already. And you understand that actually this level of, uh, uh, this level of use of that missiles is usually not for attacks on neighboring countries, but for confrontation with NATO, right? So actually right now, Ukraine is not just shield of Europe, but shield of NATO as well. And that's why, yeah, they can continue that, but I don't know for how long they can continue that because uh, even despite they have a big stock of missiles, uh, it's pretty expensive and we know numbers, right? I mean that, maybe one, two weeks of the same, you know, intensity and Russia will have no, no missiles at all. What would Ukraine like from the U.S. and its allies right now? We would like to see some balls, you know, actually. We would like to see some balls. We would like to see you, uh, you know, being ready to fight along us because this is not just our fight. And that bullshit about, you know, nuclear threat, uh, it's completely clear that Putin is mad and it's completely clear that Putin is mad uh, at least, you know, since 2014 and he annexed Crimea. And actually it, it means that he can and he will use nukes if we don't stop him, right? And we have to stop him altogether. And actually Ukrainians will definitely do it, you know? And right now the additional support, uh, no fly zone in Ukraine, you know, uh, uh, anti, you know, uh, uh, missile protection. This is what we need. And actually do something, you know, be serious uh, because all of that, you know, killed Ukrainian kids. This is, of course, they are victims of uh, Putin and his, you know, Nazi policy. But uh, the lack of balls is also a part of the reasons, you know. And um, do you think U.S. troops should be on the ground in Ukraine? The defense secretary and the president have both said that is not going to happen. So I think that right now what we can do and what we should do, we have to change the rules for Security Council, UN Security Council. And it should be completely clear that if the country is an aggressor and if the country uh, is conducting, you know, war crimes and uh, and killing, you know, kids and civilians and conducting genocide. This country doesn't have any veto right, and it means that actually it could be just in two days. Then we would have, you know, that mandate for UN peacekeeping, you know, mission in Ukraine, and we can actually send that mission, you know, uh, to Ukraine immediately. And it's just a matter of who would love to join that mission, right? So it's completely clear that it, it is possible. And again, it's not US forces, it's not you know, NATO forces, this is UN forces like in Korea. And it is, it is possible to do, but it, it, it requires you know, some balls, some balls. What are you seeing outside where you are? What are you seeing in terms of the attacks, in terms of missile launches, airstrikes? What are you seeing? It's the same like everywhere. So we have that, you know, big formations of Russian troops trying to surround, to surround our cities and to, you know, use artillery to destroy our cities and to force our people to surrender. 
What um, can you give me a, a brief description of where you are, generally speaking? No, unfortunately, I'm not able to reveal my location. I am sorry, Howard. Like in the east of the country, somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. Okay. And any any final message for viewers of Armed Forces Network? Yeah, dear dear Americans, thank you very much for your uh, assistance and your help. You have to understand that uh, actually we have right now. Uh, the completely insane leader of the Russian Federation. And it means that actually, despite of all of your leadership desire to avoid this conflict, this co conflict is actually going already. And you have no option but to join us and to win this fight. Otherwise, the nuclear conflict is more than real. And we have to do our best to help, you know, Russian people who already started, you know, uh, protesting in Russian cities. We have to do our best together to force, you know, Russian military personnel who started, you know, calling for stopping this war. We have to do our best to overthrow that government because Putin is a threat for humankind, not only Ukrainians. If you can tolerate, you know, Ukrainian kids to be killed, think about your own kids and please understand that there is no other way but to stop Putin right now, because actually otherwise you will face that uh, nuclear conflict in which probably just very few of us uh, would have a chance to, to survive. Sasha, thank you so very much. Stay safe and stay in touch. I'll be talking to you. Hope we see you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Howard. Thank you. Take care. Yeah.